We'd like to invite you to worship with us at home.
Father, we thank you so much for who you are, for your love, your mercy. Father, we pray that you'll just be with us, lead us and guide us with your Holy Spirit in all that we do. We pray that you'll bless the message, let it fall on ears, Father, and that we live for you. And it goes to the heart. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Welcome to Covington.online.church. And even though our campus is closed, we're glad that you made it to our online campus. And if you're visiting with us today, maybe for the first time or you're a regular attender, thank you for being here. And it's during this time that we've been asked to practice social distancing from everybody. But I want to encourage you to become spiritually close to the Lord. You know, James chapter 4 verse 8 says, Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and God. In the world. So take this opportunity to get close to the Lord and look at some of the positive things that can come out of this too. You're having the option to quarantine yourself from some of the bad habits maybe uh, that are going on in your life or maybe some of the bad influences that are there. And remember each time that you wash your hands, the importance of keeping your hearts clean. I know it's difficult sometimes uh, when you we don't have a lot to binge watch and you're trying to kill time, but do your best to keep your hearts pure. And if we come close to God, the word says that he'll come close to us. And isn't that what we need the most during these uncertain times? So thank you again for meeting with us today. And it's not just about getting close to the Lord either. We're trying to find ways to keep you close together as a congregation. So I hope you got the message early on. And the challenge was for us to be able to watch this broadcast together. So even though we weren't here in person, we could still worship together. And we're trying to find other ways to do that. The kids' ministry and the youth ministry have tapped into social media uh, to, to have each other um, be engaged, with, whether it's the students, or they've also given opportunities for the parents to engage with and teach uh, the younger students as well. So those are great opportunities and things that you can do to stay in touch with each other. Uh, help us find other ways. If you're doing something different, let us know. And one way is this chat forum that's on this particular broadcast. Take this opportunity to come early, whether it's 15 minutes before the service or stay afterwards, 15 minutes uh, afterwards, and uh, take the time to engage with each other uh, just to see what's going on with each other and maybe challenge each other with the message. Uh, if you have a prayer request, there's a link that's provided there. All you have to do is click it and uh, let us know what we can pray with you about. And we'll try to find ways in the future to be able to push some of that information out to the congregation safely so that they can pray as well. And it's also really important to remember to continue to give while you're able. And you can click the Give link in the top right-hand corner of the broadcast, and that'll direct you to our secure church page. And you'll find other options there like texting to give. And there's been many people that have asked, how can I mail in my check? And we're asking that, that you would send it to a post office box, Covington Church P.O. Box 623, two, Reedsville, North Carolina, 27323. Uh, that just will keep it safe if we're unable to get to the mailbox. But giving requires faith, and we just ask you to step out on faith and continue to give as if you were on campus so we can continue to minister whenever and however we're able to in the future. And we're going to do our best to, to keep you updated through our website and try to keep the most current information there. That's covington.church. And you can also find some information at facebook.com slash covington.church. And as always, we'll keep you updated with current information on our flock note messaging service. So thank you again for being here. And if you know somebody that couldn't be here with us online today, share this link and there'll be some archived messages they can watch later. Covington.online.church. And next week, we plan to stream two different services. So the modern service will be held at 930, just like it normally is. And the classic service will be streamed at 11 a.m. So hope that you all gather for both of those streams at this time so that we can, again, be together and worship together. So let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to be together. And I know it's not like we've done it in the past, but God, you're there with us in spite of it all. And I just pray that you would be with Pastor Clayton as he delivers the message today, that you would just give him the words that we so need to hear. God, just help us stay connected with each other. Help us stay connected with you during this time. We pray these things in your name. Amen. We've come this morning to bring to you a message from Covington Wesleyan Church. In the passage of Deuteronomy chapter 33, we find one of the most beautiful clusters of promises in the Old Testament. They're gathered together 
in this passage of Scripture to bring to us wonderful blessings that can come from the promises of God. It's so ironic that the 33rd chapter of the book of Deuteronomy is not read very often. But I want to share with you today Moses' final blessing to the 12 tribes of Israel and with Jacob. May I share that passage of Scripture with you. He had given the blessings to each one of them, and now he comes to the tribe of Asher. And he said, Thy shoe shall be on iron and brass, and as thy day shall thy strength be. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and his excellency of the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. He shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. In this passage of scripture are three beautiful promises. We're living in a difficult day, in a difficult time. And as far as I concern, am concerned, that in our country we've never gone through such terrible and difficult times. But we do have the promises of God. God never puts promises together in a group unless there is a reason for those promises. He said, thy shoe shall be iron and brass. God was lifting up the veil of the future. And he was trying to tell the chosen people of Israel, don't fear. Your road is going to be so rough that you're going to need iron shoes. And then he added the great assurance of these three great promises and as I have read these promises to you today, I do not think that they are confined just to the tribe of Asher, but rather God was stating the fact about a normal life. For he said, there's going to come in your life and all the people of God, there's going to come times when there will be, they will be so difficult that you feel like you cannot stand the circumstance. And we as Christians are going to have to bear our iron shoes of brass. We can do not only that by the having faith in the great God of the skies. I shall never forget, four or five years ago, I was speaking at the baccalaureate service in Reesville at Reesville High School. To my amazement, the procession was sl slowly moving through the building and down the aisle. Little did I realize that there was a little girl that was walking very slowly. She had been crippled from the beginning of life. And there were great big boys that were following behind her. Some in front of her, some behind her. And as she was coming down the aisle, I noticed that her cap sort of fell down o over her uh, eyes. And a great big 225-pound young man reached down and picked that cap up and placed it on her head again. And the procession continued to move on down the aisle. I realized that that young lady had gone through some difficulties of life, and yet she had a smile on her face because this was the day she was going to be graduating from high school. I realized also that in those moments that God was able to give her the strength and the grace to endure difficulties of life. I shall never forget when it came her turn to receive her diploma, the principal of the high school, as she came forward to get the diploma, he knelt down and handed her her graduating diploma. Everybody cheered. 
Everybody was happy. Everybody was excited. And to me, that was a time when her inspiration shone brightly to everybody that was there. You and I need to realize today that God may be allowing us to wear some iron shoes of brass. But yet at the same time, he will give us the strength and the grace to endure the difficulties of life. You know, God does not ask us to literally wear these shoes. But this little girl wore hers realizing that this was something she was going to have to live with her entire life. You know, God never promised us as Christians that there would be no suffering. And the grandest little man that I ever read about was a boy or a man by the name of Paul who had a hump on his back. He had a thorn in the flesh. We don't know what that thorn was. And time became difficult for him. And many times he was willing and ready to give up. But in the midst of one of those difficult times, I shall never forget reading the scripture where it said, Christ said to him, and he wrote it in one of his books of the New Testament, my grace is sufficient. Dear friend, I want you to know that God's grace is sufficient. Even in these difficult days, his grace is sufficient. If you will look at the life of Christ, and realize what he went through. He also wore those difficult shoes. I shall never forget reading about him going to Gethsemane. As he sweat as it were great drops of blood. And he went from Gethsemane to Gabbatha. Where he was tried by the Sanhedrin court. And from Gabbatha he went to Golgotha. And from Golgotha he went to the grave. And from the grave, he finished his race and he finished his course and he counted it victory because he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he gave to us the greatest promise of all promises that's ever been. But I also remember a man by the name of Simon trying to run away from Christ. The shoes had become so difficult for him to wear. And then he met that Christ that I'm talking about as well. And on the firing line, he picked up those shoes again and put them on and went to his martyrdom. There he suffered for his own Christ that he loved. You know, God knew if we Christians were going to wear iron shoes like real soldiers of the cross, we would need these three promises that I want to share with you today. And there are no repetitions in these promises. First of all, he said, as thy days, so shall thy strength be. Alexander McLaren said that was his favorite text. He said, I never will forget when I was 16 years old living in Scotland that I was given my first job at a mill. He said from, from the mill to my home it was six miles. And he said I prepared myself to go and my dad walked with me the first day that I was to go on the job. And then he looked at me and he said Alex I want to tell you something. When you finish Saturday night I want you to be prepared to come home immediately after you get off of work. Alice was caught by a stunning comment because he knew between his home and the factory there was a very black, deep ravine. A lot of meanness, a lot of murders, a lot of unusual things had happened in that black ravine. And he said to his dad, he said, Dad, why don't you just let me wait till early Sunday morning and come home? He said, oh, no, Alex. He said, you will have been away from this family for an entire week. And you've never been away from home like that. And so I want you to be sure and come home Saturday night. He said, all week long, he said, I prayed and I cried. And I said, God, 
how can I go home in the darkness of the night and walk down in that black ravine? And he said, but yet I wanted to honor my father's request. And so I decided as I prepared my goods to go home that after I would get off of work, I would say a brief prayer, whistle on my way and go toward that black ravine that led to my home. He said, as I got closer, I began to weep. I began to cry. I began to pray. And I said, Lord, you're going to have to give me the grace to make it through. He said, all of a sudden, when I got there, I thought to myself, I can't do it. I cannot bear this. I cannot go through with this. But then I heard some strange steps. As I listened, they sounded familiar to me. And all of a sudden, up out of that black ravine, stepped my dad. And he said to me, Alex, I've missed you so much, and I want to walk with you the west of the way home. My dear friend, I want to tell you, my great God of the skies has said the same thing to all of us that are going through difficult days. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. Think how good God is to all of us to always prepare. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. How beautiful for every Christian this illustrates when the darkness and the unknown passage of life comes, Christ also comes. Wasn't it Lawrence Theron who said, one of the, who was one of the first English novelists who wrote, God tempers the wind to storm the lamb. Maybe this was a lesson that God gave to the children of Israel because he only provided for one day at a time with them, with their food, with their manna, with their bird, he provided what they needed. God will provide what you need and will be with you in your difficult times. The second promise that's, that's in these passages of Scripture is this. Underneath are the everlasting arms of God. Now, no doubt, there was something that Moses had learned in the previous chapters because he talks about the eagle as he would sit and watch the eagles. And the mother eagle, after so many days, these little birds who could not fly, who could not make it, she knew exactly what to do. She went over to the nest and she tore the nest apart. She threw the nest over the cliff, and those little, little eaglets were there waiting to see what was going to happen. And all of a sudden, she would let them climb on the back of her shoulders and her wings. And she would take them, and she would soar up to the sun, all oh, way up in the clouds. And then as she did that, she would lean over to her right or to her left, and let those little eaglets fly all along by themselves. They were, they were screaming. They were fluttering. They were searching because she had left them. And she watched them as they began to float down through the sky. And all of a sudden, just when they thought they were going to go down to the crags, she went underneath them and let them land on her wings again. She would do that three or four times. And then all of a sudden she would look at them and she would catch them every time. But after the third or fourth time, she looked at them and she said, You see there? You can make it too. Underneath are the everlasting arms, my friend. And so the writer puts it this way. Underneath are the everlasting arms of our mighty God. Our heavenly Father will not allow us to go through any difficulties of life without him being there. And so we need the message today so deeply settled in our heart 
that we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the great God of the skies is going to take up care of us under these most difficult circumstances. You know, when the psalmist wrote about the chief shepherd, the good shepherd, and the great shepherd, if you look at that passage of Scripture, when he talks about the good shepherd, he was using a most endearing and realistic idea when he said the good shepherd would do as David did. What was that? David took those sheep out on the mountainside. He had a staff and a rod. They were to fight back the enemy. He was there to be their security. And every time one of those little sheep would begin to drift away, he would go get it and tenderly bring it back to the fold. If one got sick, he was there by the side. And that's what our great good shepherd is. He will come to us in our sickness, in our sorrow, in our problems of life when we feel like that nobody cares and that we're all alone in our home, in the hospital, in the nursing homes, and in circumstance of life on the job and other places when no one else knows about it, the good shepherd will come and un help us understand that underneath are the everlasting arms of a mighty God. And the third promise that is given to us in this passage of Scripture is that the eternal Lord is thy refuge. Stated in a beautiful poetic way, he gives that to us that we might lean on it up. We need to know that we have a sanctuary to where we can go and get along with God. You remember our Savior did that. When the crowds would come, when the stress would be there, our dear Savior would leave his disciples, those that he loved so dearly, and go up into the mountain and get along with God. And began to pray, I'm sure, and reach heaven for himself in those difficult times. There are times in life that you and I need a sanctuary. And I really think that's the reason that he tells us over in the book of Matthew, in that Sermon on the Mount, when he said, you need to go into your closet and shut the door and get along with God. You know, I was quite amused at people that were so moved by the book, The War Room, and, then the, and the movie that was produced about the war room. And I thought to myself, I've had a war room all of my life since I've known the Lord. I have to have times that I go to the sanctuary where I have that I spend my time with my Heavenly Father. I did even for this message today. I got along with God several times. And I talked to Him about what I needed to say to you in these difficult times. When I can get along with God and pray for the entire congregation and our country and our world, our leaders as well. We need some time to go to that war room and get along with God. I think one of the greatest illustrations that I'd like to give in closing today was my father was a fox hunter. Uh, just like uh, Pastor Surrey's granddad. They loved to hunt. My dad had a dog by the name of Ranger. And for the benefit of you who may not know, I grew up in Troy, North Carolina. And uh, there was a gold mine there up at a little place in the middle of nowhere called Uari in El Dorado. It was there that the gold mine had been mined for many years before. But there were a lot of men who would go fox hunting 
near Coggins Gold Mine up at El Dorado. And my dad and a group of men would grow, would go and watch their dogs run and listen to them through the evening and through the night and the early morning hours. And invariably there would be some old red fox who could get away from the dogs and he would be heading toward that old gold mine, realizing that those old dogs, those old hound dogs, those fox dogs could not reach him. And he would run for some time until he became tired himself. And he would go out close to the mine and he would sit there and comb his fur and try to wash himself down and he would listen for those dogs out in the future, out in the, getting, try, trying to get closer all the time. Every once in a while, he'd perk his head up as if to say, I've got them again. I've got them again. And finally, when the dogs got closer, he would slowly move inside of uh, uh, the hole where he could go in and the dogs could not reach him. It's amazing to me that there's a sermon in that. I think that my great God realized that we as his children needed to understand that he was going to be with us in our difficult time and be there and be an under everlasting promise that he'd be there. And that as thy day, so shall thy strength be. And the eternal God is our refuge. Let me tell you, if you've got a difficulty that you're going through, the eternal God is your refuge today. My favorite passage of scripture that I want to close with is found in the 91st Psalm. The great psalmist wrote these words. And I think they're so great for us in these days. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High can abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, and my God. In Him will I surely trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the fowl of the air and from the northland pestilence. Listen to this. And he shall cover thee with his wings. And underneath are the everlasting arms of God. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. And listen to these words. He said, I shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all of thy ways. Remember these promises and may God's blessings be yours. In the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we deliver them and may God give you grace for the coming days. Let us pray. Our Father, we are so thankful today that within the book that we read, we have all of the great promises of God that will keep us strong in our spirit. Give us the great hope that we have and realize that God is still in control. In Christ's name I pray, amen.